Hi and welcome, I'm Glenn. This is the third tutorial where we're designing skate park elements. We've got some crazy things going on today. Here's the drawing. We're drawing two different shape ramps, but then we take it to the next level with turbo fans that hold the skaters up in the air. Remember, it's just for fun and drawing practice, so you can come up with your own design. In tutorial one, we met Chiggy. Here he is balancing his skateboard on his toe. He built his own skate park with the help of his friends from Ashley Wild Ramps. We practiced drawing this massive half pipe and in the second tutorial, we took on drawing and designing some grind rails. Here's Chiggy sliding through the rail and rolling out the other side. In this last tutorial, we're going to be drawing a ramp. And can you believe that Chiggy has so much speed when he hits this ramp, he actually flies up the wall, turns and skates back down again. Drawing a cube is often one of the best places to start. So grab a splat and choose a starting point somewhere near the bottom of your page and then go ahead and draw your cube. Slide it up to the top of that line and draw two more edges, rotate the splat, line up the corner and draw your far edges in. All right, next step is to make this cube into a ramp by drawing some diagonals. So find those two points and simply connect them with a ruler. Same with those two points. I'm going to squiggle out the lines that we're going to erase. You may need to redraw some of the lines, but unlike my dark lines, you need to keep your lines nice and light until we've totally finished the drawing, then we come back and darken them in. I'm sketching in a little skateboard here because we're going to talk about how we get onto the ramp. Hey, can you see at the top of the ramp, there's a little metal strip that makes it nice and smooth to the wall. There's also one at the bottom. Let's draw in that piece of metal to make the ramp a little bit smoother to enter. So in the splat direction, extend the lines front and back and then copy that line further down. And that's the little piece of metal. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing at the top. So we're going to extend the lines, make them the same amount and then copy that line straight up and draw it in. Here I'm showing you how to make the ramp even smoother. We're going to get rid of the bump using an exercise book, or in this case, a notepad. Just bend it to the shape you want. Make sure you keep the same shape when you mark the front one. Time to erase a few more lines. Hey, I did tell you to make sure all your lines were light, right? Here I'm carefully following my light guidelines that I just did and hand sketching in the curve. Sheets of plywood are bent and screwed down to the ramp. Have a look at the natural pattern in the timber sheet. Let's draw three sheets of plywood. So guess a couple of marks and then use the splat angle to make sure the line goes straight across. Now to make each of those look different, I'm going to use just a standard timber uh, kind of pattern. But in the next one down, we need to make it look different. So just a few plain lines on a different angle. And in the bottom one, I'm going to repeat the top, but the other way around. Add a few screws to fasten it down. Chiggy showed us it's possible with enough speed to skate up the ramp and up the wall. Let's draw the corner of the building. From that point, use your splat and imagine a point straight out there. Now, join it with a ruler, skip over the top of the ramp, and there's our corner. I'm going to stop my line about there near the middle because I'm drawing the corner that goes up and down. Now, from that point, grab your splat, line it up like that, and when you trace on that edge, that's the other corner of the room coming out to your right hand side. I'm going to try and draw another ramp. So as long as I have that corner on the line, I could start anywhere on the line. Let's begin by drawing a cube again. Erase those unwanted lines and then go ahead and join the diagonals.
Can you see how this ramp is facing the other way? I'm going to leave uh, this ramp with straight edges, but I am going to add a little bit of sheet metal at the bottom in a nice big curve like that to make entering the ramp a lot smoother. That line is the start and end of the metal, so I'm going to need to erase that line. Chiggy's ramp has a little platform right beside. Let's go ahead and draw that. Here's the shape as it would appear on the side of the ramp. Now I'm going to extend that out in the splat direction. So from each corner, draw a line and make the lines all the same length. And if they are the same length, you'll find that you can draw vertical lines there and the other splat lines, and they should all join up. They don't quite join up, they're only light lines, and just fudge it when you're darkening it in. A little bit more wood grain on this ramp, and we're ready for some colour. And for the more advanced drawers, let's have a go at the super turbo fans that hold the skaters up in the air. I'm really drawing a cylinder, and I'm making it look hollow by tracing around inside that line. Lots of these thin, sketchy lines represent fast airflow. I'm drawing a full ellipse, put your pencil at the side, slide it down and draw a half ellipse. Join the corners, might be easier to rub out those lines first and um, connect those. All right, so a little bit of overlap there behind the ramp. So this is the middle of the propeller or the blade. Make it look hollow. I'm going to try to draw a skater balancing or riding that big air wave up high. Um, so there's my basic skateboard. And I always draw the feet first and then some legs with a bend in the knee, usually. Then where you want the hands, um, they're flying backwards. Well, let's engineer a way to hold these really heavy motors onto the wall. I'm drawing an arm here. It's going to be round. And then I'm drawing a bracket that's flat to the wall. So I'm using those splat angles. And then some bolts. This could be an access panel. I'm drawing the panel on the same curve as the motor. Maybe some switches or lights. And we'll need some power. So there's my power point with a lead coming out to the motor. I can't wait to see what tricky elements you'll design into your skate park. Let's imagine how this skater could get off this massive airstream. We need a little platform here. So whenever you use your splat lines with a splat straight up and down, you'll be drawing a flat platform. Just give it some thickness at the bottom, and you can work out a way to attach it to the wall. So she cleverly jumps down onto the platform, but we need to help her get all the way down to the ground. Can you think of something? Here's how you draw a sloping ramp. First of all, draw where the ramp starts. Use the splat angle and then where it ends. And once you've got that, it doesn't matter what angle it is in between, just use a ruler. Good, and let's give it a little bit of thickness. So our ultra skillful skater can now enter the ramp at the top, grind down and exit the bottom. Hey, cutting a square opening in this wall should be pretty easy. Hold the splat straight up and down and then trace around those three lines. Slide it up and draw the one across the top. For the 3D effect, from that corner, draw a short line back and then two more lines. I think you can see it. Uh, what about if you want a little counter on the other side? Let's extend it out a little bit further. Human figures, when they're standing, are pretty easy. Just a head and some shoulders. This one has a drink on the counter and this one is filming with a TV camera and this one could be filming with a phone. Darkening in behind the figures also adds to that 3D effect. If you've managed to draw everything so far you've done an incredible job. Uh, how do you think you'd go designing some posters to put on the wall? Now it's time to darken in my drawing. I'm going to go over the top with some pen and then erase the pencil, or you could put it underneath some thin paper called bond paper and make a new tracing. Pencil is way better than texture for getting this uh, light colored look of plywood. It's called rendering when we're coloring things in and helping to make them look 3D. 
choose the smallest face in an object and make it a little bit darker. And that adds to the, the visual interest. It's called contrast. Watch as I render a few more of the objects in the drawing. Now choose a texture in the same colour as each object and go around the outside. I'm going to do the same thing with these ramps. It helps to make each object stand out in the drawing. Hey thanks Chiggy for your inspiration and Elro Photos for supplying the images. Thanks uh, to Ashley Wild Ramps for your amazing work. And especially thanks to you for joining in. Remember drawing is not just about art, it helps us to become better engineers, better designers, scientists, mathematicians and problem solvers. If you'd like to grab a splat then see the comments below and please hit the like and subscribe that way we can get more free tutorials out to you. Thanks very much, I'm Glenn, bye.